takes us is where we go, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up a certain topic from here. Uh, Benjamin Banneker, right? For, you don't, for those who don't know, Benjamin Banneker was the one who designed the White House. He was a brother, uh, some would call him more. Uh, I want to bring uh, special attention to his works. He also designed the Bunsen for a lot of That's right. right. That's right. And it, it, was, it was the first person to actually had made a, a clock here in the States. Wow. The, first time, the first time anyone ever made a clock was that brother. He, he was really versed in astronomy and, and brother had a lot of knowledge. So the reason I want to bring him up, you know what I'm saying, is because you got to think about it, you know what I'm saying? If we were living in a society that was so racist, right? They were, they were looking at people who had three-fifths of the man, uh, black people, you know what I'm saying, brothers or whatever the case may be, if they were looking at the brothers as less than, why would they go to a brother to design their empire? You know what I'm saying? Unless we were living at a time where brothers was really designing everything. You know what I'm saying? It hadn't been a time where it was really common practice to use someone who knew the craft to build your structures. So how is it that we go from that to now calling the man three-fifths of a man? You know what I'm saying? Something had to happen for them to really uh, 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 really uncover the truth in terms of who were really building these structures and building these buildings and building these cities. You know what I'm saying? Benjamin Banker wasn't really a rare story. There were a lot of brothers out there who had the knowledge who were being used as contractors to build up structures. You know what I'm saying? But something might have happened, had to happen that it went from that as a norm for, uh, for, for, for the, uh, the powers that be to go to these brothers for this knowledge to build these structures. Something had to happen from, from going to that to now, now they're not being used no more. Now their credit is being taken away. Now, they, now what they're built is being credited to other people. You know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, when people are, are, are looking at this country as a them kind of a thing, it's not a them kind of a thing, man. They, all of our resources were, were, all of our talents were being used to build this thing from the ground up. You know what I'm saying? From all our levels, of, of creation. Even the word America itself, they say uh, it was named after who? Uh, I, I dispute that. I dispute that because the people who started this country, right, uh, were Moors and Hebrews. When Columbus first came to this country, he needed, and uh, uh, the brother covered this in his, in his last presentation, he needed Hebrew speaking Moors in order to communicate with the Hebrews who were already here. Right? Now look at the word itself, America. Right? I already covered that all the continents were covered by the same, but start with the same letter. Africa, America, Asia, Australia. So now here comes somebody who names uh, America this beauty, whatever the case may be. He's gonna name, hit the whole continent over him? Nah, man. Look at the word itself, America. If we were started by Moors, America, right? What was the first country to recognize the United States as a country? Morocco, right? Morocco is a Muslim country, a Moorish country, a Moor country. So we had to start tying in the, the, the roles the Moors played into creating this land. Because the reason, the, the way, why it was called America, it had to do with the Moors. That's why that mur is in that word America. It's really a Morica, the land of the Moors. Right? Thanksgiving, what do we eat? Turkey. I right? don't eat that, you said we. Well, we in terms of, in terms of a country, in terms of, of, of what the, the mainstream is. But yet we don't really question the fact that if it's so much of an American holiday, why not name it after American bird? No, you want to name it after a Muslim country. Right? The turkey is named after a Muslim country, a Moorish country. 
But we overlook these things, right? We overlook these things. Right? Uh, we celebrate our uh, Independence Day, right? July 4th. I know. We celebrate our, our Independence Day July 4th, right? Now check this out. July 4th falls on what? 7 4. Now check this out. We're going to get into some numerology right now. The Moors always leave their signature using numbers. The numbers they always use is the number 7 and the number of nothing. Right? For instance, for instance, great example, the King James Bible, which we all use here. King James was a Moor. You know why? The King, the, the King James Bible was made in 1611, right? Now let's backtrack. When did the Moors enter the Europe? The year 711, correct? Right? Now look at the King James Bible, 1611. One and six is seven, 711. How many scholars it took for, the, for them to write the King James Bible? 47, four and seven is 11. The Moors, they leave that signature in whatever they do. You know what I'm saying? When Columbus came to this country, that first year, was it? 1492? For those who know numerology, you add one plus four plus nine and two. You know what I'm saying? Those numbers added to seven. He came with 250 people on that ship, two and five and seven. So throughout history, they leave these signatures to let you know who was involved with these things. So when you look at that King James Bible, yeah, you can tell King James is a more kid, but the mathematics he left behind for us to decipher. You know what I'm saying? So when they say things like America was named after some white dude, nah, man. The people who came here first, the, king, the people who came in that ship with Columbus, those Hebrew Moors, those Ladinos, the term Ladino is actually a Moorish speaking Hebrew. Uh, uh, the Moors who were, came here with Columbus who helped them communicate with those who were already speaking Hebrew in this land. Those were called Ladinos. And then you mix them with the Dainos and then you get Latinos, mm. right? So that term Ladino was always mixed around it before we even came here. They were the people who were speaking Hebrew but were so happened to be Spanish Moors. You know what I'm saying? So when, when we, we see the, the, the creation of America and they call it America, I like to decode and chop things down, man. And that, that, that name America did not come from somebody's name, man. It came from the people who really actually built these lands, who were speaking Hebrew, who were Moors. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of this information we have to sometimes challenge and not totally accept and we have to come back and kind of decipher it and ask more questions about, about this land we, we, we in right here, man. A lot of the Hebrews, a lot of the Moors had a lot of uh, input and a lot of, uh, of, their, of their blood, sweat, and tears in building this land up. And we have to come back and, and acknowledge that. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's what information I wanted to put forth, man. Um, if anybody has some questions, anybody wants to add, some, add to that. Yeah, I got a question. Yeah, family. Because you, uh, you stated that um, America was never named after a white man named Amarillo Vespucci, right? Because that's what we've been taught. That's what we've been taught. Right. So now my question to you is, if the name America wasn't the name of America itself, what was the name of America before it was America? And where did that name come from? Uh, I mean, I, that could be disputed. But what I'm saying is we have to start putting one and one, two together. Now, I understand what the fact saying. The fact that it's called America, it sounds very, very close to a Moor record in terms of translating because it sounds like the lands of the Moor. And the first, the first country to recognize the United States as its own uh, uh, entity was another Moorish country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have to start putting And we eat turkey in Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? We got sports putting these things together, and when they say things like, oh, a white man named Africa, or a white man named America, that's just uh, them putting them, uh, us in a paradigm. You know what I'm saying? And, and not giving credit to those who really named this land. You know what I'm saying? So whether or not that's true or not, that's just my way of really decoding what they're giving us when we were little, man. You know what I'm saying? Challenging that, right. making it better. So, all right. But you said decoding, but we deal with facts. Right. We deal with the information. Right. Us as Israelites, we deal with the facts and, and information and the evidence. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? We right. don't just go about what connection may have been, and there has to be a solid evidence right. that will prove mm -hmm. a statement that you make. So right. a statement that you made, like um, America not being named after a white man, which we all know. I, no, I said, I say it was, I just said, I disputed. In terms of what else was going on in that time and who was here at the time, All right. I'm not. I'm not saying I have facts that America is not named that. What I'm saying is we have to question that. We have to okay. not just totally accept it and, and see what else was going on at the time and right. who was here at the time. 
Yeah. So now I feel the love. Before talking, so my question to you is, uh, based on what you've been trying to teach us, or what, based on what you're telling us, what was the name of this great continent before it was America? That's a good question. Well, I can tell you that it's in the Bible. It's, it was named Arzurif. Mm, when right. you read Second Exodus chapter thirteen, how, how, you, how, you, how you spell it? Arzurif, A S E R S A R E T H. And they go that little that letter A again. That letter A, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm asking you because mm -hmm. if you're saying that that country was not named after a white man mm -hmm. named Amarillo Vespucci, mm -hmm. the Bible claims and you know uh, it tells us that. Well, come up here, I mean, right. So what I was saying is that um, the land, what we call America now. Um, before it was called America, it was really named um, Arzareth, A-R-S-A-R-E-T-H, all right? And we can find that in the book of 2nd Ezra, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 40 to 46, mm -hmm. all right? So this is how we know that America um, um, was called Arzareth. Now, about where America came from, we've been taught that it was named after a white man that conquered the, on this continent named Amarillo Vespucci and um, you know that's basically one of the things that we want to get together because the brother says it did not come from a white man named Amarillo Vespucci but what we've been taught this is where um, you know I'm saying this white man actually conquered these continents and named it after his own self just like the white man always do after he conquers a land he named it after, after his own self so I would like to know what was the name of America before it was called America um, if it wasn't ours, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, I just want to ask you a question. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, the question is, you, you dispute that the American Constitution is how we named the, this country, but what led you to that, to your belief that it was named that uh, Amora, Amora? Just knowing how this beast works, mm -hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? Like. Sometimes they'll do that just to throw you off to make you think that they the ones that, you know what I'm saying? But when you got really, like, why not call the land Columbus if, if he was the one who came here, you know what I'm saying? It's like they throw you off. Like, and, and, I, like, and I throw those numbers out there in terms of the Moors leaving their signature, using that seven, that, that 11 as a signature, because I feel like they probably felt like there would probably become a time when all of their works would be erased. And the only way to really determine who, what they did is to leave these little signatures behind. You know, but that's just my own understanding of that. And but I mean, you can see that's what's going on. Like you know, what I'm saying uh, this this information to come out that the word uh, Washington, uh, uh, the last name didn't even exist. Like there's no Washingtons coming from Europe. You know what I'm saying? So where did George Washington, that last name Washington, come from? But a lot of people uh, will tell you that it's a translation. It means to cut down. That last name means to cut down the roots. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a Native American term. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense. Like Washington cut down the roots of the Moors, <laughs> or the people who really established this land. You and I'm sure some of your brothers seen Hidden Colors, where and where they talked about a lot of these paintings where you see uh, George Washington, where you think might be a slave, who's really a Moor, who are the people who were uh, uh, building this country up. You know what I'm saying? The way you can tell that is because they they in a turban. You know what I'm saying? All decked out. They're not looking like a slave, you know what I'm saying? So something must have happened where George did the Wichita. He broke, he chopped down the roots of the people who were building up this country, you know what I'm saying? But 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 really that that notion is not too far-fetched, man, because that's how they've been doing it from forever, man. You know what I'm saying? They did hip-hop is a perfect example, man. You know what I'm saying? It was built in these streets not too far from here. You know what I'm saying? But here comes a big corporation with the big bigger studios, bigger cameras to take that credit away, you know what I'm saying? So the ones who really started it don't really get that credit. And now we, we think of uh, terms like Def Jam and these big corporations thinking that these are the people that started it. And, and this is their pattern, man. They see what you do, you start, they see you start something good and they hear they come. You know what I'm saying? And that's been throughout the history. So I'm, I'm not saying that as facts, I'm just saying that as a way for us to start decoding this history in terms of looking at it differently and looking at it more deeper. You know what I'm saying? And not just accepting that those information is, is in those history books, man. Because of course, by now, we get knowledge of self. We, we have to know that the information they put in those history history books is to keep us in that, in that paradigm when you're thinking that they created everything and we have to go to them for everything and they have all the knowledge, man. When it's all, it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the 
Opposite, it's, it's the opposite way, man. It's totally different, man. The Bible speaks of that. Who, you know what I'm saying? It talks about them flipping everything upside down, man. And once you get into this knowledge, you start to think like, yo, everything is upside down. Like you start thinking, okay, north is south and east is west. Like really, they did a great number and flipping everything upside down. Because if you stuck in that paradigm and did studies and where how things are now, you're going to be stuck and you have to really look at it and really flip this earth upside down and look at it definitely like, oh, okay, it makes sense now more like this because, you know, they, they, they in that paradigm, they want you to think a certain way, man, and they do that through the education, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I, you know, I don't want to uh, beat that horse too much, man, but... Um, the, only, the only reason I ask you is because as Hebrew Israelites, usually when, when, we, when we state something, mm -hmm. There was a clue left somewhere because the scriptures tell you that the white or Esau is gonna their, their tongue is gonna fall upon themselves. So somewhere along the line, they slipped up and left some part of information. That's why I asked you how you how you came to the to the point where you you believe that America was named America. If there was something some clue that led you to that being your thought pattern. Well, the clues are the people who were building shop, like the, that slave, that ship, I won't say slave ship, because first Columbus came here, first with builders, then the slaves came after. Mm -hmm. Those first builders were the Moors. Like, you can't, you can't go around that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, if the Moors had, and those Moors meaning those Northern African uh, population of people who were, who were, who were starting to spread out, among the world because the white man started to come into Africa, you know what I'm saying? So they started to say, hey, you know, this people coming down with white man, let's 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 set up shop somewhere else. And that setting up shops somewhere else was here. You know what I'm saying? When they were ransacking on uh, Africa, they, a lot of the Moors left and set up shop right here. So that's why Columbus said, you know what I'm saying? That's how Columbus got all the knowledge. You're like, okay, where y'all where, where y'all going? You know what I'm saying? Where, where all these people are going? Where y'all where y'all bringing back these riches from? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Columbus navigator was uh, Pedro Alonso Nino. You know what I'm saying? He's the one who actually navigated Columbus to get over here. So this person, this brother, already knew the past, already knew where he was going, already was bringing back the riches back into, into Europe. You know what I'm saying? It's just Columbus, he wanted a piece of the pie. You know what I'm saying? But you know, something must have happened where the credit was just, you know what I'm saying, taken away. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Where all these Moors were already coming into the Americas, dealing with and, 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 and bartering with the Native Americans, you know what I'm saying? Something must have happened where, you know what I'm saying? Okay, we're gonna stop that, and now we're gonna come in and take over. And that, that's, that's what happened. So it's not, it's, I won't point you to a certain fact or text and say, okay, America was named after this. You kind of just have to put things together. Like, you know what I'm saying? These, if these brothers were over here, Coming over here, setting up shop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there has to be a little bit more than just a white man calling the whole country. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Be, and then when you tie in the knowledge that all these continents are, are start with the letter A, now you're gonna tell me a white man named all this like this? Nah, man, it hasn't been the Moors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that that was their nature. The, the whole nature of the Moor was to is, uh, to improve humanity among the, the world. They were master navigators. You know what I'm saying? So they were. Traveling the world, spreading this knowledge, what they knew, you know what I'm saying. So, so, and, and you had to kind of put one and one together, and say if they were the ones traveling the world, then they had to be the ones naming these continents. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, you know, sometimes you got to just challenge information. And we, sometimes it may not be concrete. We just have to break it down and decode it. So, really, in full effect, you got to ask questions. That's right. That's right. Okay, it doesn't mean that that you ask a question and you think in your mind that it, it's a stupid question. It's only a stupid question if you don't ask it. Okay, all things you gotta ask questions on. Like the thing on Christopher Columbus. How can Christopher Columbus discover America where people was here? It's like, it's like I discovered a car but then you ain't discover the car. Somebody own it. So that right there is a lot. 24 beads and the Indians were an expert in making beads in making beads out of gold. Come on. That's a lot. So when you preach that lie and people believe it, 
without asking questions, mm -hmm. does that make you look stupid? Yes, it does, because you weren't asking no questions. But a wise man asks questions before he believes. And that also says it in the scriptures. That's right. In terms of the way that certain lands got their names, like, you know, you don't think that America got its name from America with Vespucci. What is your understanding on how uh, this, the, the continent of Africa got its name? Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, in history it's taught that um, Leo Scipio Africanus conquered all the dark nations, Africa being one of them, and he placed his name, or his name was placed on that land. Mm -hmm. What is your understanding on that? Do you believe I mean, from my, from my, from my understanding, uh, from my understanding, there was words already in place like Afa in Northern Africa, okay. Afra, you know what I'm saying, and Ka, Kaaba, you know what I'm saying. Like these words were already in place in Africa, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So, so my understanding is whoever that person was was coming into a land where he was already hearing these terms. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And, and I, I don't know who I, who I talked to this uh, about this, but. Christopher Columbus, I feel, was probably named something else. And after he accomplished his mission of, 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 uh, of promoting that false image of the false Christ, that's when they gave him the name Christopher. And it's like, you a photographer or a telegrapher or a you know what I'm saying? Christopher, I feel, was a title that they gave him after he put forth that false image of Christ. You know what I'm saying? So you can really look at his name and decipher it. You know what I'm saying? As someone who's uh, offering or, or, you know what I'm saying, like a photographer, you know what I'm saying, he was doing the Christopher, you know what I'm saying, I feel like his name itself is to be decoded, you know what I'm saying, like he, he kind of accomplished a mission of, because really what his, his mission was, besides finding land, whatever the case may be, in that ship, they had two paintings, they had the, the, that white Jesus and they had that, uh, uh, the painting of the, um, the, uh, the Last Supper. So it was almost a promotional campaign, you know what I'm saying, to put these images out in the new world, you know what I'm right. saying, to do the Christopher, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know, you may me that information may, may be nowhere, but I look at it as uh, his name itself was, was a title. And when you look at history, you know what I'm saying, this is not far fetched because things like Pharaoh and all these things are really not named, they're titles, right. you know what I'm saying. So. Really, uh, uh, people like uh, Africanus or whatever these people name, I feel like they were sent out to, for missions, and after their missions were accomplished, they were given that name. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I feel in terms of how history works and how that beast works. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, uh, you know, that's just to add on to that. We know that Columbus's name was was different. It was Christo Cristobal Colon. Okay. So we know that 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 name wasn't his original name, hmm. but he used the. From what I understand, that he used the scriptures in order to find his lands over here. Right, he used the one that y'all right. was stopped quoting. Yeah, he used, he used a, a scripture in 2nd Ezra. Mm -hmm. and, and there's movies that go to show you that too. Right. Uh, what, what 1492. Is it? 1492. Yeah. Because they always tell on themselves. They always tell on themselves. There's clues everywhere. That's why I brought up the question before. Mm -hmm. I just want to know where, where, where your clues were. Because our, whatever thoughts we have, they come from some aspect of knowledge, of knowledge somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to ask you that, you know? Yeah, man. This, but you said yours is not based on any particular uh, text or stuff. This is what you've deduced from uh, what you've read or what you put together. I mean, it's, it's just making the connections, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you're not gonna really just find the facts out there like that, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta pull from different sources and kind of it, you know what I'm saying, put, put, it, put it together yourself. Um, and I think that's what we have to do throughout history, man. Like, look at it with a fine comb, you know what I'm saying? Because they're really good with taking that credit away. Really good mm -hmm. with, with really uh, 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 making you think that they started something. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So and sometimes, you know, once we get caught in that paradigm, you, you lost, you know what I'm saying? You start really giving credit away where credit is not due, you know what I'm saying? So um, we, we have to just really look at everything and, and, and question everything, you know what I'm saying? A uh, perfect example is Santa Claus, man. You know what I'm saying? Santa Claus came from St. Nicholas. Right. St. Nicholas was a really righteous brother right. Absolutely. in those lands at a time when there was nothing but unrighteousness going on. Right. So you had this brother who gave him all his wealth 
all his fortune to get back to the poor. Where he got that notion from? From the scriptures. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A black moor. You know what I'm saying? But now they take that image, flip it around, and once you start getting a little bit of knowledge yourself, you look at that Santa Claus, you start hating that Santa Claus. Yes. Not knowing that, that it came from something really pure and righteous, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So really, um, these, these things, they, they, that's how they do it, man. They'll take something nice and pure, switch it up around, and now you start hating it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not knowing that it came from you from jump. When you use the term more, yeah. in terms of a race of, of people, or is that a religion that you speak of? Uh, the more is, um, is, is used to describe uh, a group of people who were settled in the north, northern part of Africa. Because that, that term more, you won't really hear in the southern part of Africa. And more in the, the northern part of Africa, the Africans that were advancing up into Europe, the times of the, uh, the Dark Ages that were going up there and, and, and setting up shops, civilizing those who were really uh, uh, um, out of whack in the Dark Ages. In the Dark Ages, once the Roman Empire fell, right. everything fell. Like, there was no, no uh, kind of civilization. So they were up there wilding out, you know what I'm saying? So when these Moors came up there, they came and civilized everything. They came in with means of, of bathing and little uh, basic things that a human must uh, uh, use to maintain themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They came with the sciences. They came with street uh, uh, illumination. They, they, they illuminated the streets same way we have street lights here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they came and and and, and uh, advanced that whole civilization. You know what I'm saying? So that that term more is really more in terms of the, the ones that came into Europe at a time where it was the Europe was just Nothing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they were looking at the Moors as gods, you know what I'm saying? The term Mogu, the term Mogu we associate now with a lot of uh, Caucasian uh, rich people, right? right? But the term actually came from when these uh, Caucasians were in the Dark Ages looking at these Moors coming drenched with gold. Right. They call them Mogus. That's where the term came from, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, the term more is, is really in terms of how uh, the Europeans were describing us as the people coming in to come save them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, the Moors, you know what I'm saying? But something happened where it came from a, a feeling of admiration to now a jealousy to now, now we're trying to erase you from history now. They, they use your resources, they use all the things that you bring towards them to up, up, uh, elevate them. And they won't give you the credit. <laughs> and they still do that to this day. They you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what the Moors were. There was ones who came, and, and the, the, the year they came in was uh, seven. Uh, was July seventh, seven eleven. Now look at those numbers right there. July seventh, seven eleven. Seven 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 eleven. These are these are things they do. How they rock? They leave these selections behind, knowing that that number seven is that perfection number, that, that completion number. Right. So they incorporate it in all they do. King James did it. Columbus, all, they all did it. They, 1492 adds a seven. Everything they do, they add up to that number. And, and that's to tell you, folks, so for generations to come, if you try to figure out who, who was involved with that, if you decipher, you'll know the boys had their hand in that. The number seven and the significance that it carries. Right. Uh, you just said that uh, one of the significance it, it had, it, it carries a, a symbol of completion. Right. Now, for us, it means, it does. Uh, Carry a, a symbol of completion, but for us, what it what it symbolizes is the seven major captivities that our people have been in, and America being that seventh and final captivity that we're going to suffer. And after that, then you know uh, Christ comes back, and the kingdom of Israel is reinstituted on this earth. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the number seven in terms of completion mean? To you. Yeah, you don't want to get I mean, I did a presentation on YouTube breaking down numbers one through nine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go into it a little bit. When I deal with numbers, I don't deal with numbers as uh, preconceived notions of what someone told me what the number is supposed to be. I deal with the number as a shape, as a symbol. Same way you just be a brother's deal with the metal net and all that. Like I break the number down and how, how, how it looks. So when you deal with that number seven, you look at it and you start to realize that it's almost looking like an arrow pointing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's pointing upwards, like it's, a, it's a uplifting, like, you know what I'm saying? It's awakening, you know what I'm saying? And everything about that symbolizes awakening, rising up, 
Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Going from the lower state to a higher state. Now look at the number that, that's before it, number six. Right. Look at the shape itself. Like throw away all you know about number six. The shape is showing you a, some kind of energy in the bottom with a line with a little line on it, right? Okay. Opposite of the nine, the nine, where that energy is above. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have the six and the nine. You know what I'm saying? So check this out. From six, then you have seven. That seven is basically showing you rising up. It's pointing up. So whatever energy was low at the lower self at six is now rising up to seven. You know what I'm saying? And eight is those is that duality of that the, the upper sphere uh, doing with the lower sphere. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the eight is duality. You know what I'm saying? You got moon, sun, and moon, whatever you want to call it, yin and yang. You know what I'm saying? Only one could come above that, that duality, that conflict. That's when you get the number nine. So that process from six, seven, eight, nine is that lower self going into higher self. I'm not even dealing with what someone told me about those numbers. I'm just dealing with the shape itself. You know what I'm saying? So how, it's, it's, it's a universal symbol. You know what I'm saying? You can replace it with anything. You, that, that, that sphere could be, it could be the energy, it could be your inner self, it could be the sun, whatever energy, the universal energy you're dealing with is, 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 is pertaining to that. So now coming back to the number seven, it's, it's a very powerful number, man. You won't find any religion or ideology to, to go against that because it's completing. It's, it's that step above that lower self. It's that point where you go from being down here to taking that first step up. You know what I'm saying? Moving up. And just dealing with the shape itself. You know what I'm saying? So so all religions, man, like the seven, it's the seven chapters, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the first seven chapters is dealing with the story of creation and how I follow it. Why in heaven? Those are seven verses. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look at the Quran. That 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 prayer they say before they do anything. Uh, it, um, uh, Allah, the beneficent, uh, merciful. All these things. That those, those are seven uh, verses. Seven is is injected in all these allegories because it's that number of rising up, man. Right? You awakening. You you, you create something from your lower state. You know what I'm saying? So. That, that's what that number, that number seven represents, man. Just dealing with the shit alone, not, you know what I'm saying, um, and, and injecting anybody else's beliefs towards that. I'm just dealing with the shit and how it looks and how it, 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 it whatever energy you're dealing with the number six and how it, you know what I'm saying, is that step of love rising up. Okay. When you go into the Hebrew, the letter Ga, Gada, I think it's, it's called, okay. um, it has the same shape of the seven. And that, the, the, the meaning of that, of that um, symbol, means to rise up or to like excel or like the mountain mm -hmm. or you could um, compare it to the camel because mm -hmm. it's, it's you know um shaped like that mm -hmm. so it means the same thing to, to excel to to rise up awakening knowledge itself you know what i'm saying you get to a higher state you know what i'm saying you're dealing with the shape itself